Hi guys. So I'm going to explain to you guys about my quiz. So total there were five questions. So I thought uh, recording this video would be faster than me having to type at the story and maybe some of you wouldn't even understand what I'm talking about at the story itself. So I'm going to be taking this IGTV video so you guys can take a look. Okay, so now for the first question here, I have asked about this person, Encik Zain. So around Peniaga telah merekodkan ambilan barang niaga yang digunakan oleh keluarganya sebagai ambilan. So over here, you got to take note on the word eh? ambilan, kegunaan keluarganya. So I don't care what is he taking, but he is taking for his own use, his family use. So this is considered out of the perniagaan already. It should be recorded separately compared to recorded inside our buku perikanan. So over here, which of the answer will fit into what concept it actually diamalkan oleh Encik Z? So over here, answer is entity perasingan because do you see the word asing? Asing means separate. So what does it mean by entity? Yeah, now, a lot of you don't understand, but actually the word entity meaning two different person or two different things. So if we talk about Encik Zain, Zain, okay, so this is him. Bao Peniagaan is another entity. Sorry, yeah, hold done. So Peniagaan is another entity. They are considered different things. So I should separate them. That's why when Encik Zain recorded it sebagai ambilan, as in not sebagai belanja, then this already follow entity berasingan's concept. Okay, so over here, right, it's given to you other options, okay? Ketekalan, we have prinsip cost and also wang sebagai ukuran. So for your reference, if you want to go and do revision, which chapter is this from? I'll say this is from form 4, but 1, and please be careful, one. This chapter will come out and specifically for Prinsip per accountan, okay? Concept, concept. We have uh, all those other stuff that is under prinsip. You got to go and memorize because this form 4 part 1 will come out in paper 1, objective question. Paper 2, soalan 1 will also might come out. The chances of it is very high. So please make sure to study well. Which of the prinsip is for what type of sentences? So example over here like ketegalan. Ketegalan is talking about method. Uh, cara merekod or otherwise kaida. Cara merekod ataupun kaida. So we have these two journeys. If they talk about menggunakan kaida yang sama, then yes, this is our ketegalan. Means we stick to the same thing. Okay, maintain. While for B, just like explained already, entity berasingan, as long as it's anything about family and the perniagaan, things that are supposed to be personal, then we record it separately, is considered correct entity berasingan. So for C, prinsip cost, uh, this one is talking about cost. Now cost, as usual, you guys will see it beside the word asset bukan semasa. Like sometimes when you look at your imbangan duga, right, you will realize on the word, let's say perabot, Beside of it, we'll have this thing, bracket cost. And like usual, my form 5 students, when you count susut nilai, what are you going to use to calculate your susut nilai? You will use cost to multiply by percentage. So the cost is actually the original price of your asset bukan semasa. So over here, the word prinsip cost means we stick to original price. So they will give you sentences, example, uh, mentioning about your kenderaan. So kenderaan went 2019, okay? 2019, I bought it at the price of 70000 And at 2020, the current value of your car have became 55000 But in the end, when my permit is recording it, he decided to record back to 70000 Why? Because he is following Prinsip cost. So that is the meaning of prinsip cost. Okay, so for the last one, Wang Subaga Ukuran, this is actually um quite uh quite basic because everything in our accounts we record in RM. So this is the value. How are you record? How are you gonna record your items? So Wang Subaga Ukuran, we use RM as the measurement for everything. This is the meaning of it. Okay, so this is our A, B, C, D. Answer is entity per asing. Okay, so this is first question. Now, second one. 
second quiz, okay? Second one is about this uh, title here. If you guys notice well enough, I purposely put the Gerdai name on top for you to see one. So you must make sure uh, to check, okay? Gerdai Gemudi Electronic Sendirian Berhad. So what do we sell? Here it says electronic, means this is our barang nyaga. We sell anything that is electronics, okay? Example, uh, you have your aircon, you have your fan, anything that runs on electronics, okay? Then it will be under uh, our barang nyaga. So this is actually to tell you barang nyaga. Yelah, benda, benda, barang-barang electronic. Okay, so down here, pengurus perniagaan telah mengambil dan memasang dua unit kipas yang berkos 1,100 so you need the pejabat kedai. So what does it mean is, now uh, our pengurus did took the kipas from our stock. Okay, It was initially a barang yaga. But in the end, when he took out, he didn't take it for the use of permit. Permit didn't use it for him, himself. Okay, Instead, it's to install it inside the office of our kedai. So it turns out it's still kegunaan perniagaan, right? So how would I record this? Now down here, we have total of four choices. Okay, Receipt invoice, memo, and nota debit. So which one will be suitable to record this urus niaga? Eh? Now remember, they have own users one. Receipt is untuk bayaran ataupun penerimaan. Wang. Okay, receipt is for bayaran atau penerimaan wang. So if you look closely to the urus niaga above, there was no money involved in the urus niaga. We were just talking about moving items from barang niaga to change into the form of kegunaan perniagaan, which is to become our lengkapan because it's a kipas. Man. So no money involved. How can I use receipt for it, right? So A is wrong already. Okay, so what about B? B is also not involved. Because invoice is untuk this method. Hold on. Eh? Okay. okay, so for invoice, what is the use of invoice? Over here, I said it doesn't involve because why? Invoice is untuk jual atau beli secara credit. So you look at the above urus niaga, there isn't any draw atau beli at all. It was just mengambil for kegunaan perniagaan, transporting the thing from a barang niaga into kegunaan perniagaan as kipas, our lengkapan. So invoice also not involved. So for memo, now this is actually where it comes in because memo got specific use. Right? When do we actually use memo? Only when I don't have supporting documents as in there is no receipt for me to record down. Then my permit or this pengurus or my accountant will have to write out a memo just to inform everybody. How come my barang niaga become lesser? Because I took it to use as lengkapan inside my perjabat kedai. So memo's use is fitting into this question because memo is untuk modo tambahan, modo tambahan, ataupun ambilan. Okay, model tambahan ataupun ambilan. So this is for C. Lah. Okay, let's continue to D. Now for nota debit, this one got specific use as well. So receipt, invoice, memo, nota debit all have its own use. That's why you won't mix up one. So for nota debit, this one is actually untuk bertambah hutang. Okay, so when? Actually, nota debit, I have another name which is called as invoice tambahan invoice tambahan. So the meaning of it is when I issued invoice and something is wrong with price, as in I'm supposed to record it as 1000, but I accidentally recorded wrongly on the piece of invoice. It was supposed to be 1000, I write until 900 ringgit. So there is a missing of 100 ringgit. How should I top it up for my customer? I will issue a nota debit stating the problem. I have miscalculated and now I'm going to add on 100 ringgit for you. So the nota debit is actually to help you record things that is added on. I want to add on the hutang, then I will issue the nota debit to my customer. So A, B, and D is not involved for this Urus Yagala. Okay. All right. So we have first and the second already. So, so far, uh, if you have any questions, you can actually uh, note it down and then later on you can ask me through the M. Lah. Okay, so let's continue to the third question. Now, over here, the third question is talking about an imbangan duga. So actually, the uh, the real question doesn't have it so short. Lah. There's plenty of words there, but I have already pointed out the key point. When you look at this question, 
what do you need to see? Now, this is an imbangan duga. I always tell you guys, imbangan duga's item have a specific place one. Go according to classificasi, which is what we learned since bab empat or even bab six, we will did the revision for imbangan duga. Classificasi, we have lima jenis where asset belanja must be on the debit side. Hasil EP liability will be on the credit side. So you see, when you do checking, okay, among the choices that they give you, pulangan beliat, you got to know, okay, what is the classificasi of pulangan beliat? So you record down. Pulangan beliat is actually considered as hasil. Or otherwise, you want to view it as a negative belanger is also the same thing. They should be on the credit side okay so why is pulangan belian a hasil because initially the main account account indo is account belian so when this happens i have pulangan what happens to my belian my belian will get deducted so belanja berkurang so that's why i say you can also treat it as a negative belanja but the more correct way according to our textbook is considered it as a hasil because we return the item back to the pembaga then I no longer have to pay them anymore. So pulangan belian is a hasil to us. So you see, credit ma. But no, the Y is not on the credit side. The Y is on the debit side. So we couldn't have pulangan belian as the answer. So why D? So I go straight to the point. Yeah? Because ambilan, do you guys remember? Always, if you join my class, I will remind you guys. Is it just to label as equity permanent? No, never. Your ambilan must always come with the negative symbol. So you should record it as a negative EP instead. So where does negative EP sits on? Now you see, uh, when I was drawing this earlier on, these are all the positive side of them, which is their original position. If you want them to minus, of course, there's a place for them to minus. That can't everything plus for me. Ma. So if positive EP on the credit side, then you want to minus eh, the balik from the credit it will becomes on the debit side that's why the correct answer is ambulant because it's a negative ep position is on the debit okay so for b and c cannot fit because sewa determina is a hasil lah. so sewa determina credit side one overdraft bank bank at first is asset but then because it became overdraft you overspent your money so it became negative form war then it considered as ls already also on the credit side so abc is all wrong only d is correct okay so now last two questions at eh? number four kira can model culture now please 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 take note this is from about seven we learned this when we were talking about penyata kedudukan kewangan penyata format so the pkk that we have hold on yeah My iPad is a little bit laggy today. I'm not sure what. Okay, so PKK, let me just write it out. So this PKK is supposed to have model culture. So why? Because model culture's formula is AS minus LS. So you see, among the items that they give you, all you need to do is just identify out first. How many assets, how many liability you have here? So I double check for you guys. All of them are under Sermasa category. ABD, AS. Okay, account belong by LS, insurance pra by AS, sewa belum terima, also AS, and gaji belum by is LS. Now, once you have uh, identified all of them are under semasa, then you can just take out your calculator, do what? All the asset, you press plus, all the liability, you press minus. So you don't even need to group them together first because they are not asking you to prepare PKK, ma. they just want you to find out the final answer. So just take asset minus IBD, then you get your answer to be D. So answer is 2950. Okay, eh? so now the final one, final question. Oh. All right, so for the fifth question, is actually asking you to kira kan susut nilai for alatan kecil. So this one here is actually other than form 4 bar 8, we also learn it in form 5 bar 7. It's just a very small section. So why I say that? Because Alatan kecil is only introduced when you started doing Bab 7, the cost pengeluaran chapter. But it doesn't affect because susut nilai, you only have three formulas. So let's do a little bit of revision. Eh? So for atas cost, you will use cost times percentage. Okay, second formula is called baki berkurangan. What you will do with it for baki berkurangan, you will take cost minus 
SNT, cos minus SNT, to multiply with percentage. So this is the second formula that we always use. Now, these two are the basics for form four. Form four, you will always use these two formula. So when do we actually use the hint that I talked to you guys about? So I put it over on my Instagram story where I put a hint up here telling you guys which formula to use, which is the third formula. It's called as Bernie Lion Simula. So this Bernie Lion Simula is a form five formula. Lah. So even if you learn in form four, you don't really use it yet until you go up to form five straight away. You got to start doing your Bernie Lion Simula. So this form five formula, how does it work? So the way to do it, I will say, uh, is exactly like how you usually calculate your items. So if I say now, you guys imagine uh, I have one calculator. I went to buy, uh, I, I started with one calculator and I bought another one. What would I do? I will add these two together to find out how much worth of calculator I have. So let's say this is 20 ringgit, another is 30 ringgit. I will add them together, which forms into 50 ringgit. But I wouldn't stop here because I want to see, okay, did I sell any of them throughout the year or not? If I did, okay, I decided to sell the old calculator. Sorry. What I would do? I will minus it out from my total and find out what is the final amount. But then now, what I want to get is not the final amount of how much I have. I want to know susut nilai, which is the depreciation, how much it drops in value over the years. So then the question will provide you one. Do you see here from the so alan? They gave you 1st January, 31st December. So our penilaian similar formula is actually going by this way. Baki bibi tambah berlian tolak jualan tolak HB. Okay, so initially what I was talking about is the front. BB plus, uh, plus berlian minus jualan. So what does it mean? Uh, like what I show you guys. So started from 20 ringgit of calculator. I bought in a new one. Isn't it called Berlin? So I add together, I get a 50 ringgit. But then I still got to see throughout the year, did I sell any of my calculator or not? If I did, then I got to minus it out. Do you see Negative 20 is actually this one here. Jualan. So based on the question here, don't you see 1st January? This will actually be used as Baki Bili, our starting figure. And the 31st December, is a HP that they must provide to you so you can find out the susut nilai. How much did the value drop? So BB, HP provided to you. Then you look at the maklumat tambahan. Okay, here it mentions. Alatan kecil berjumlah 430 telah dibeli sepanjang tahun 2019. So bought means what? Plus or minus? If you buy, of course, your things will get more. This 430 is supposed to be added on. So conclusion, to find your susut nilai, you are taking 350 ringgit of Baki BB. Okay, 350 ringgit of Baki BB. You add on berlian alatan kecil, 430. Then no jualan, no, no jualan means what? These are your costs. But you still got to find your susut nilai, right? So compare with the Baki HP. Why does the question tells you that in the end, your alatan kerja only worth 210? Because throughout the year, it has a susut nilai of how much? 570. So how you found that? By doing 350 plus 430 is equal to 780 minus 210. That's why you get your answer 570 long. So the answer is D. Okay, so that's all for my explanation. This is the quiz for today. So I will try my best to come up with more quizzes. So make sure you guys stay tuned for it. Okay, bye-bye.